Bertha Takes a Drive, How the Benz Automobile Changed the World by Jan Adkins. This book and the love of our little family in Gainesville is for our marvelous new member, Gloria Zinnia Berger. Bertha Benz woke her two oldest children with a soft nudge. She put a finger to her lips. Quiet, she whispered. All three tiptoed down the stairs in their socks. They put on their shoes and stepped into Papa's shop. In the cool August morning, Bertha, Richard, and Eugene pushed a strange machine out of the shop and into the alley. They were sneaking away with Papa's invention, the Benz motor wagon. Richard began to giggle. Hush, Bertha whispered. The policeman out front will hear you. Germany's emperor, Wilhelm II, had declared that the motor wagon illegal and posted two officers outside the Benz's home. The government couldn't imagine what would happen if people could get up and go wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted. Church officials were not happy with the invention either. It was too new and too loud. They called it Der Tufelwagen, the devil's wagon. But Bertha was convinced that the motor wagon could be wonderful. At the end of the alley, they gave the engine's big flywheel a spin. It started up smoothly and quietly. Where are we going? Richard asked. To grandmother's, said Bertha. To Forsheim, Eugene exclaimed. He and Richard could hardly believe it. Grandmother's house was more than 60 miles away. The motor wagon had never gone further than the end of their block. The trip would not be easy. The roads were rutted, bumpy, rocky, and dusty. They were meant for horses, sheep, cows, and goats. Good, Bertha said to herself. Hard roads will prove the motor wagon isn't a toy. Outside their neighborhood, the motor wagon began to kick up the country dust. Bertha heard the engine wheeze before the motor wagon shook to a stop. Behind Bertha's seat sat the new engine built by her husband, Carl. It was tiny compared to the giant steam engines on ships and locomotives. Carl called it an internal combustion engine. Anyone else might be worried, but Bertha wasn't. From working in the shop with Carl, she knew that engine inside and out. Dust, she said to the boys. Dust has clogged the fuel line. Eugene and Richard watched their mother pull out the long hat pin that held her bonnet in place. She poked the pin into the fuel line to remove the dust. The fuel could flow from its tank and into the engine once again. With each rut and rock in the road, the boys bounced in their seats. Soon they were starting up a steep hill, but the motor wagon's little engine began to shake and cough. It almost stopped. Out, Bertha yelled. First, the boys jumped out to lighten the load. They ran beside Bertha as, they, as she steered. But as the hill grew steeper, the engine came closer and closer to stopping. That's when Bertha jumped out. Come on, boys, she shouted. The three of them pushed with all their might. The motor wagon gasped at the top of the hill at last. Bertha and the boys leaped into their seats and rushed downhill, rattling over the bumps. This is fun, squealed Richard. As trees and bushes sped past them, Bertha added to her mental list of improvements for the next motor wagon. More power, better springs. Miles later, the engine stopped without a wheeze. Cleaning the fuel line with the hat pin didn't work this time. Your father says a good engine wants to run, Bertha told the boys. If it won't run, you just have to find the reason why it can't. She stalked around the motor wagon. Aha, she said. These rocky roads. All the shaking and bouncing has caused the wire to rub against the frame. The rubber coating around the wire has worn off. With a grin, she reached under her big skirt and took off one of the rubber garters that held up her stockings. She wrapped the rubber around the bare wire. When Bertha spun the flywheel, electricity went to the right place. The wrapping didn't let electricity escape before it traveled through the wire to the engine. They were off once again. By now, the coolness of the morning had worn off. The sunlight was warm and sweet. Richard was delighted to be carried over the landscape and past the fields and forests at a thrilling speed of nearly 70 miles an hour. Everyone should have a motor wagon, Eugene called to his mother. 
Bertha smiled wide and agreed. Behind them, the yellow dust raised by the whirring wheels billowed brightly. They waved to folks beside the road as dogs barked and cows mooed. Farmers watched as the strain machine passed their beet and bean fields. Just before they reached the next town, Wiselock, the motor wagon sputtered and died again. Bertha led the way to Ockler's apothecary shop. Three, two, one. Just before they reached the next town, Wiselock, the motor wagon sputtered and died again. Bertha led the way to Ockler's apothecary shop. She asked Mr. Ockler for five liters of naphtha. Mr. Ockler stared at her. Bertha stared back. He couldn't believe she needed that much gasoline-like fluid. He was used to selling small amounts as spot remover for clothes. Most customers buy a bottle like this, he said. If you'll bring five liters of naphtha outside, Mr. Ockler, I'll show you what it's for, Bertha said. Outside, Bertha pointed to the brass fuel tank. Right here, Mr. Ockler. You're heading all the way to Forsheim in this? He asked, almost spilling the fuel. Yes, Mr. Ockler, and some day farther, said Bertha. By now, a small crowd had gathered. They were fascinated. There's no boiler? Just this tiny engine? Asked one man. It doesn't run on tracks like a train? Inquired another. How fast will it go? Can you breathe at that speed? Asked one woman. Bertha answered all their questions. Richard pointed out the steering handle. Eugene showed off the elm block brakes. With fuel in the tank, the Benzes were soon bouncing down another steep hill. Mama, Eugene yelled, we're going too fast. Bertha pulled back on the brake lever with all her strength. It wouldn't slow them down. She steered this way and that, barely keeping the motor wagon on the road. The vehicle let off bitter smelling smoke as it rocked from side to side. What's that smell? Richard asked. The brakes, Bertha said. So much friction builds up heat. The wooden blocks that press against the wheel have been worn smooth, so they slip and smoke instead of stopping the axle from spinning. When the steep hill turned to flat ground, they finally slowed to a halt. The boys watched their mother take the wooden brake blocks off the motor wagon. She got a local shoemaker to nail thick, rough leather to them. Leather prevented the brake blocks from slipping against the wheel rims. Bertha had invented the brake linings. They were off again. The sun was close to setting when they drove into the village of Forsheim and right up to the door of Bertha's mother's house. Bertha, my dear, and my boys, her mother cried. What a surprise. We've driven Carl's marvelous motor wagon to Mannheim to see you, Mama. We've had a lovely drive, Bertha explained. In that thing, her mother asked in horror. Oh, yes, Bertha said easily. It wasn't difficult. Richard and Eugene looked at each other and grinned. Was their mother kidding? You'll see, Bertha added. Other people will be driving up to your door in Ben's motor wagons quite soon. I hope not this evening, her mother said firmly. While the boys were eating up Grandma's soup, Bertha walked to the village telegraph office and sent a sweet note to Carl. She knew he had to be worried. Bertha also sent telegrams to newspapers. Those newspapers told other newspapers. The story of her journey made it its way to Berlin, Paris, and Rome. Excited headlines about Bertha's drive were traveling faster than the motor wagon all over the world. Emperor Wilhelm II liked reading stories about brilliant German engineering. He told the policeman outside of the Benz's shop to go home. Church officials decided that if a woman and her boys could use the Tufelwagen to visit Grandma, perhaps it wasn't so evil after all. Carl was proud of his wife and grateful that she was brave enough to show their family and the world what his motor wagon could do. Bertha didn't think she had done anything especially extraordinary. She had taken her boys for a ride in the marvelous motor wagon. Carl, Bertha explained, it was simply time to take a drive. The Benz Motor Wagon 3 Looking back, writing forward, 
how difficult it is to write and illustrate the flavor and reality of lives from more than a century ago. Is it possible to recreate Bertha Benz's view of the world? She lived in a world we can never walk through. Most of it was rural land full of farmers and herdsmen, with only a few cities that were like industrial islands. Electric lights were rare. Women's lives were restricted, dependent on family or husbands. Children's lives were not carefree, and often, because of childhood diseases, tragically short. And yet, society was changing during Bertha's life. Because of new, powerful technology, the telegraph, railroads, and steamships. Common people were just beginning to move around. A middle-class family might take the train to the seashore or the mountains. Emigrants from war-torn countries could book cheap steerage passage across the Atlantic to North or South America. News from the impossibly distant countries arrived by telegraph. A sense of the world's real size and diversity was part of a new consciousness. The big world was frightened by men, too many, even Kaiser Wilhelm. From our porch in today's world, it sounds silly that he and the church banned the Benz motor wagon, but the churchmen and emperors field independent people who wanted to change old, comfortable rules. They feared that independent people wouldn't want to govern themselves, govern themselves and choose their own leaders, and might even refuse to fight for squabbling kings. Change is seldom comfy. Change, however, excited Bertha Benz. She was brave, sensible, and strong. She was a businesswoman, mechanic, inventor, and revolutionary. She astonished the world in her monumental trip across difficult country in an unproven invention, her motor wagon. On this journey with her boys, Eugene was age 15 and Richard was 14. She met every problem with a calm sensibility. And when she drove into her mother's yard at Forsheim, she had accomplished a true adventure. She was a hero. The only reason we haven't heard about her is that heroic women often go unnoticed. Describing her journey for you has made me very happy, even though it has been exceptionally difficult to get Bertha's adventure as close to the real story as I can. No one wrote down Bertha's words, so I've imagined what the mother and explorer I've come to know might have said. At times, researching this book was confusing. Most accounts of Bertha's journey, you can see a few on YouTube, show her traveling in the first model of the Benz motor wagon, the BMW 1. That was the very first car, but Bertha made her famous trip in the Benz Motor Wagon 3, a more refined machine. Discovering how it worked and how it was put together had been tricky. There were no measured drawings or widely shared reproductions of the BMW 3. I've done my best to interpret the BMW 3 from a few dozen good photos of the original. It was difficult, but you're worth it. Young readers deserve the truth. Details count. And while I'm not at all certain that my illustrations accurately show every precise detail of Bertha's world, including her beloved engines, gears, belts, and levers. Everything has been drawn with diligent research and great respect. What I hope Bertha would appreciate most is the book's admiration for her toughness, intelligence, and vision. I wish I'd known her. Don't you?